Hello again. Uh, the olden shot today is about what I call the neglected lens. Back in the day, um, when amateur photographers had progressed to SLR cameras, it soon became necessary to expand our range of lenses. A lot of us would buy two additional lenses, a short telephoto in the form of a 135mm and a medium wide angle, either a 28 or a 35mm, depending on budget, what we had to spend. The wide angle would get used a lot because it could get everything in the frame. It also had a good depth of focus, depth of field for keeping stuff in focus. So it didn't need a lot of thought about composition. The 135mm lens we would get used a couple of times to try it out and then often got left in the bag or even back at home. Just about every amateur photographer had one but you didn't often see them getting used. Yesterday I decided to get out the Practica MTL50 and slap the Pentacon 135mm 2.8 lens on the front. I was only going out with that one lens so working a bit outside my comfort zone, I haven't to think about each shot a bit more. So here's the camera with the lens on the front. The Practica MTL50 we've covered in earlier um, videos. Um, the Pentacon 135mm lens goes from 2.8 to 22 it focuses down to approximately five and a half feet it's got quite long throw with the focus and has a built-in lens hood compared to other uh, eastern block cameras from this era I like the Pentacon, especially the MTL50. It's a nice camera to use, it handles well. Compare it to the Zenits, and um, this feels like a whole step forward compared to them. It is quite heavy, and it's quite noisy. But it is nice and easy to use. The metering is um, step-down metering so when you're looking through the viewfinder you have to press this little lever on the side here which closes down the diaphragm and switches on the meter so you check to see if you have two red arrows pointing at each other easy system to use and works well <clears throat> the destination was Bedlington Forge not really heard of outside of this area, but hugely important to the expansion of uh, transport and communication. Bedlam Iron Works introduced malleable iron railway track to the world. In fact, it was used on the world's first passenger railway, the Stockton and Darlington. Nowadays, there's almost nothing left of the site just a few ruined walls amongst the undergrowth and it's now a public amenity with paths and seats. It was a sunny day, quite warm, but amongst the trees I found myself having to open the lens a bit for correct exposure. All the shots I took were at 125th of a second and the apertures were f8, f5.6 and f4, mostly 5, 6 and 4. As I found out, the depth of field on those on closed shots is very narrow on a 135mm at uh, those apertures. So let's have a look at the shots and then we'll come back.
I really enjoyed shooting with the 135 lens. Um, it does take a lot of thought. Um, it's not a lens for wide vistas in landscape, but if you take it out, you can go for, I would call them more intimate shots. And uh, with the close ups, as you would see on some of the shots with twigs and buds, um, the depth of field is very, very narrow. Um, but having to think about every shot does give you a lot of satisfaction. And um, the film performed very well. Um, not a lot of grain on the film. And uh, if anything, the negatives were a little bit on the thin side, but the, they scanned easy and uh, the details all there. So, um, film pan 100, I'm still enjoying using that film. So, I really suggest you uh, try this yourself. Go out with only one lens. Maybe one that you're not normally comfortable with. Uh, the 135 millimeter lens, I've got to say, is um, it's not the first lens people would reach for if they're going out and uh, taking landscapes or um, exterior shots. But it is fun, and if you get good shots with it, it gives you a lot of satisfaction. So that's it for this time, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.